Disappearances happen at a pretty alarming rate. It's hard to believe that people can seemingly vanish into thin air this day and age, but it still happens, especially in the places on this list. We're starting things off with Sargasso Sea. Throughout history, this region of the North Atlantic Ocean has been described by explorers as dangerous and mysterious, riddled with seaweed said to entrap ships and strand them in the middle of the water. And there is a ton of seaweed in this area. A third of the Sargasso Sea is covered specifically in a type of seaweed called sargassum, which floats on the surface of the water. Another thing that adds to the mystery and danger of this section of the ocean is that it overlaps with the Bermuda Triangle to the west. What really made this part of the ocean so treacherous though back in the day is its lack of wind. You can go months at a time here, there's virtually no wind. And uh, yeah, that's kind of important for sailing ships kind of how they get around. So it's no wonder this place became known as a graveyard with countless ghost ships spotted floating aimlessly through the water. Sometimes skeletons being all that remained of the crew. Even in more modern times, yachts have been found drifting alone in the open water. If you are enjoying our channel so far, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, leave your thoughts and comments complaints down in the comments below. Next up we have Pecos in New Mexico. This place has a pretty ominous nickname, the New Bermuda Triangle. And now I've said it before in past videos, I'll say it again, any place with the word triangle in its name, not a good sign. Usually means there's some bad mysteries going on in the area. Like people going missing, for example, which Pecos, New Mexico has kind of become known for. And that really sucks because it looks absolutely stunning. One of the strangest disappearances here was in 1998. A woman named Emma Tresp was on her way to the Pecos Benedictine Monastery for a religious retreat. She was driving down a particularly rough road nicknamed the Devil's Road, when her car got lodged by a big rock. And at this point, you know, she got out of her car, circled around, likely to take a look and see if she could dislodge the rock. But after this, she disappeared. Her car was found and there were footprints circling her car, but there weren't any leading in any clear direction away from the vehicle. It was believed that Emma had walked away to search for assistance, but there were no tracks to go off of and her remains have never been found. It's like she just got out of her car and poof, vanished. Here's a place that doesn't sound sketchy at all, Superstition Mountains. Uh, gee, I wonder if anything weird goes on in this part of the world. Now, there are plenty of legends surrounding this mountain range in Arizona, but a lot of people go missing here because it's just dangerous. The canyons are deep, there are lots of drop-offs, and a lot of people have been killed here by other people. So even aside from the paranormal side of things, it's just an inherently dangerous area. And on top of people being found dead here, more hikers go missing in the Superstition Mountains than in any other mountain range. That's about five hikers per year. And historically, this place has been known for its danger. There's said to be treasure buried somewhere in the mountain range, belonging to the lost Dutchman. People have flocked to these superstition mountains for hundreds of years in search of it, and a good number have died doing it. One of the creepiest things this place is known for are the bodies found with missing heads. Sometimes the heads are found, other times the head will be found, but very far away from the body. Next on the list we have the Bennington Triangle. This is a region in southwestern Vermont that seems to have a lot of eerie stuff going on. There are all your triangle classics here, ghost stories, UFO and Bigfoot sightings, and of course, missing people. There's an ancient Algonquin legend about a malevolent stone with an appetite for human beings. According to the legend, this stone devours unsuspecting individuals, leaving no trace of their existence behind. Now, sure, this is folklore, but there are a lot of very strange missing persons cases in this area. One of the creepiest cases is the disappearance of college student James Tetford. In autumn of 1946, James Tetford boarded a bus heading towards Bennington. 
Tetford took his seat on the bus, and at some point he dozed off. But when the bus pulled up into Bennington, Tetford was just gone. His luggage was still on board the bus, but he had just vanished into thin air. At least that's what it looked like. There are also cases of Paul and Weldon and Mitty Rivers who vanished without a trace. There are tons of theories which attempt to explain what's going on in the Bennington Triangle. Firstly, there's a lot of dense, rugged forest. It's just easy to go missing in the vast wilderness. But then there's the paranormal stories. Uh, some people think there are vortexes or portals here that people get sucked into, never to be seen again, which is kind of similar to the legend of that stone that consumes people I discussed before. It's interesting. Pyramid Lake. Now, this is a gorgeous lake in Nevada with a very dark history, and even today it's known for its dangerous side. There are tons of legends surrounding the place. Sea creatures and mermaids are said to inhabit the water, but one of the creepiest legends about this place is the Aboriginal Paiute legend of the water babies. Angry spirits that drag unsuspecting victims into the cold depths of the water. It's said that on some nights, you can even hear the sounds of these spirits crying or laughing from the lake. A lot of people have drowned in this lake, and because of how deep it is, a lot of the bodies have never been found. There's a very odd thing also that happens uh, sometimes. Occasionally, someone will go missing, likely from drowning, and then their body will turn up in Lake Tahoe, 61 miles away. All right, you wanna talk about places people disappear from? try the Alaska Triangle. Not only do people talk about weird stuff happening there, like UFOs or Bigfoot encounters, but people go missing here at a rate almost double the national average. Double, that is insane. And it's really not that surprising. It's this massive chunk of wild, rugged land with incredibly harsh weather. Even uh, seasoned outdoor explorers need to be extra cautious in this part of the world. Outdoorsmen, pilots, and even entire groups have just vanished without a trace. Obviously, the challenging weather is a big part of this and how vast the wilderness is. There are also said to be issues with magnets here as well, stories of compasses malfunctioning, which makes it tough to navigate through the area, therefore making it easy to get lost. And another creepy triangular area on the list is the Nevada Triangle, just another one of Nevada's many mysterious places. I really gotta go there sometime. So this is an area of the Sierra Nevada mountain range that's gained its triangle nickname because of all the planes that seem to crash into it or have just gone missing flying over it all together. There have been about 2,000. Yeah, when I started reading about this place being known for plane disappearances, I thought there may be like five, maybe 10 planes tops that have gone missing, but like 2,000? Why would anyone fly here? Just write it off. Avoid, avoid. Not worth it. And again, a lot of the time there's no wreckage found. So what the hell is going on here? Well, uh, uh, aliens get brought into the conversation a lot. They always come up. Aliens abduct the planes. You can probably imagine the drill. There are also tales of this area being incredibly haunted and that malevolent spirits and ghosts are what cause these planes to crash or disappear. At the end of the day though, we're just really not sure exactly what makes this area so tough to navigate. Next on the list, we have the Great Smoky Mountains, a forested area on the border between North Carolina and Tennessee. It is absolutely gorgeous. Lush forests, plenty of animal life. There's a reason why tourists flock to this area, but all that wilderness also means there is inherent danger if you don't know how to navigate it. There are a number of well-known cases of people going missing without a trace in this national park. Take Thelma Pauline Melton, for example. She went missing in 1981. She was on a hike with two friends. At one point, she walked just a little further ahead of them and then vanished. Now, you could just chalk this up to her veering off the path and getting lost, it happens, but again, she wasn't that far ahead of her friends, and on top of that, she was an experienced hiker who was very familiar with this specific trail. She'd hiked it tons of times before, so that is very strange. We're back to a place that claims ships now with Lake Superior sitting between the Canadian and United States border. This is the largest freshwater lake in the world. There are countless ships 
that have sunk and gone missing here. The most famous ship is the Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank in 1975. One of Canada's most classic folk songs is inspired by this disaster, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. You're not a true Canadian if you've never heard that song. The lake is notorious for its sudden and fierce storms, and the wreckage of vessels are scattered across the lake's floor. And finally, we have Yosemite National Park in California's Sierra Nevada Mountains. The amount of creepy tales that have come out of this place, it's almost endless. Yosemite has become pretty famous as this haunted, creepy destination, especially in recent years, with all kinds of scary stories being shared on internet forums. One of the most common phenomena here are all the disappearances. People go missing pretty frequently here, and a lot of them have never been found. Some of the creepiest stuff that goes on here are people going missing and then getting found like miles and miles away from where they first disappeared. And it's a mystery as to how they traveled so far and survived all that time in the forest alone, especially the people who are particularly young. Sometimes they don't even have any memory of going missing as if their brains just erased a whole big gap of time. It's incredibly strange. There are legends of spirits in the area that transport people away, along with tales of wendigos and night crawlers haunting the woods. So while it is another beautiful American national park, you may want to think twice about venturing in alone. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.